Hi, everybody. <laughs> Sorry about the technical issues we had. We will um, hand over the um, microphone to Gay Waddle uh, um, in a second. I just wanted to have a few words with everyone. So uh, I apologize for the little uh, mishaps we had technically, but uh, it's all resolved now. So, well, I guess that you all know that um, the announcement was made that from June the 1st, Monday the 1st of June, salons can reopen their doors here in New South Wales and in Victoria. So that's great news. And I guess that everybody's excited, but also a little, perhaps a little apprehensive in all the things that they need to do to prepare uh, to make the, the salon um, COVID-19 safe. And it is really timely that we have Gay with us, who can talk us through all the steps that we need to take. Um, now, I guess that, uh, before I, I hand over uh, the microphone to Gay, I just wanted to say that all the videos that we've been learning to do to, um, uh, uh, now is the time for you to perhaps uh, do a, a personalized video to tell your clients how thrilled you are to reopen the salons and um, that you can't wait to see them, but also uh, to reassure them that you've taken all the measures that you need to take uh, to make the salon safe for them and also for the staff in, in whole. So um, uh, what I suggest you do is that you listen to Gay's presentation you probably don't need to, to take any notes because we will be recording this. And so if you're taking notes, you're, you're putting a bit of your attention in, in writing the notes rather than listening to Gay. And so because there's going to be a recording of this uh, session, you'll be able to take notes and, and pause and, and watch the recording again, uh, because I imagine there's quite a lot to take in. Um, so. Uh, just a little story um, uh, before I give Gay the, the microphone is that uh, I actually met Gay 10 years ago and um, it, I met Gay, I was attending a um, three-day skin analysis course that she does. Um, it's a very, very uh, involved uh, course. I was perhaps, you know, a little overwhelmed by all the, the material she presented is definitely uh, made for dermal therapist or beauty therapist like yourself. But I really wanted to to see uh, um, uh, the course. Now, in, it, it was a three-day course, and I remember distinctively that it was 10 years ago because uh, I, it was on the 1st of June, the 2nd of June, and 3rd of June. And um, 10 years ago, on the 2nd of June, was my 50th birthday. And I was going to wag that day. I was going to uh, skip school kind of thing and uh, not turn up for the, for the actual course on that day. But on the first day that we did the course, it was so incredible. Gay's uh, ability to teach and her, um, how would I say, her passion for skin and for sharing uh, was so overwhelming that I, I actually uh, cancelled my, my plans for that day. I had some fun things organised um, and I went to the, to the course and it was definitely worth it. So if you've never done a course with Gay, then you should. You should definitely, it's really professional. It is a, a big tick on your bucket list to do. She's um, an incredible educator, uh, an incredible mentor, coach, and you know an internationally renowned speaker so we're very very uh, fortunate to have her with us um and uh, well thank you gay i really really uh, appreciate you giving us your time to share all these guidelines that you're going to present so now i'm going to hand over the microphone and uh, you can take it from here go for it i don't need to share no, you're, the you're, you're, fine. Sharing the you're, you're sharing the screen. We're seeing your screen. Yeah, so I don't need to share. I, I can control it. You yeah, you can, you can control yeah. your screen. We see your screen, so you can control your, your, yeah. your, your slides as you wish. First of all, Frank, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. First of all, I just want to say thank you. Like um, 
seriously, I think you just <laughs> you make me sound really good. So thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. And I remember that time that you were there and you were probably one of the best students in the class. And I really <laughs> loved having you there. I couldn't believe that you were there, to be honest with you, because I've heard so much about you. So it was a pleasure to have you there. You. I really want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to come on today and talk to your wonderful stockers. You know, it's a, it's a pleasure and a privilege. So thank you for asking me. So today my talk is not on something that I normally do. I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone here. So thank you again for that, Frank, <laughs> pushing me out. But it's, um, I think it's something like as clinic owners, we all kind of need to be aware of, you know, some of the things that we need to do um, going back into the workplace. And I think it's amazing news when that news was announced on Sunday night, I think all of us around Australia rejoiced. So it was just amazing. So it's been a very, very tough time for, for all of us. Mm -hmm. So today what I want to talk about is um, COVID-19 safe guidelines. So I'm going to go through some guidelines. Um, and also at the end of it, I want to talk about the opportunities, opportunities that we've had that have arisen from us going into this shutdown. So I think we need to embrace it because it has been an opportunity for us to grow and learn in many, many, many ways. And um, going back into business is going to be completely different. So a lot of the stuff that I'm going to go through, you might have already heard, um, but I actually have got, um, I have a clinic so that I'm about to open. <laughs> um, but the COVID-19 safe guidelines is something that we need to, to reassure ourselves, our staff members, our team members, and our clients about um, and I think, you know, I think we will have the occasional visit from health inspectors. You know, I'm pretty sure that that's going to happen. They're not just going to let us out there in the workplace. I don't know. I don't really understand why um, beauty sounds. It's like we were taken out of our, you know, we were put into an isolation all of our own when it came to what the, who they were shutting down. So, you know, I have lots of beautiful hairdressing our friends and they couldn't understand it either why we were so isolated because I really do believe that we practice hygiene standards and we're probably one of the the, um, the professions that actually have a high standard for that so it was very very sad that they kind of pushed us around I think maybe that's a little bit of ignorance and not understanding what we do so hopefully from this you know government departments and people will understand exactly what we do because we have been in the news so I think they'll understand and hopefully we'll get more recognition than what we've had in the past from this. So let's just go through some of the guidelines that we need to have. So one thing that um, we need to have is to make sure that we have a safe plan. Now safe plan is a document, I don't know if you can see this, but it's a document that I actually have that is basically pages and pages long. So it's, it's um, a document that actually will give us preparation phase and action phase. So on this document, it has things that we need to prepare for and what we need to action. So just for an example, you know, if you have someone that um, comes into your business with the COVID virus or they come in with their ill, then you need to have an action plan for that. And this is where we need to be very, very clear on what that action plan is going to be. So possible or suspected COVID 19 cases, how we are going to deal with that. So employee exposure, uh, transmission from unconfirmed undiagnosed cases, you know, people that are just exhibiting flu-like symptoms, we need to have a plan on how we're going to deal with that. And so that action phase is broken up into two, possibles and confirmed. So what you possibly would do and what you would do to confirm that you've you've actually clarified that you did have a case or you didn't have a case and you took action about from that. So that COVID um, safe plan is something, now you can, you can download these <coughs> or something similar to this, there's a checklist and I know that all government um, departments actually have this checklist depending on your state. So, you know, um, I don't know if you've seen this document, I'll just hold that up, it's a COVID uh, checklist so I would download that checklist and go through that because it actually will get you to check off things on how to look after your team members. You know, um, checklists on what we need to do in the business as far as social distancing and record keeping and hygiene. But I'm going to go through some of those with you 
um, today as well. But I think you need to actually look at that. You can get that through your health department in your state. So Australia, we're different from state to state. Um, we don't have the same um, standards or not standards, but the same things that we have to abide by Australia wide. So you have to go into your state wherever you are to download that. So a safe plan is something that it's a document and please, you know, it doesn't have to be a long document. That means it needs to be a document on how you would action if someone came into your business that had symptoms of COVID-19, or if someone had visited you and you didn't know at the time, but later they were diagnosed that they had COVID-19, you need to have an action plan. That's a really important document that you need to, um, that you need to actually download. And Frank, I can actually share parts of this with you. Um, it's a copyright, so I actually, it's not mine, I actually bought this one, so it's a copyright but I can actually share parts of that with you that you might want to um, share. Absolutely, great. Okay, so the next part is just making sure that you have a document that supports that plan. So whatever you do, you've got to have a support system as well. So you have the plan and then you need to have a document that supports the COVID-19. Um, so it's a tool and it's just one sheet and on that tool, it will have the situation, what actually happened in that situation. So basically, it's like you having a book that if you have a problem in your clinics or your salons, that you would record that information. So, um, and then what will happen after that is the status of your business. So this is all part of your plan that you need to have in place or you should have in place. So if someone came into your business and they were diagnosed with the COVID-19, then what would your salon status be? You know, how would you do that? Will you close immediately and then clean? Um, how long will you be closed for? And that's the time frame that you'll have to have to state as well. So you just can't close for a day. It would be like a two week process that you would have to close for. So all of these things are there to actually help protect you because if you do have someone that comes in and you don't have these in place, then and the health department find out that someone has been in your business with COVID through no fault of your own, you could be closed down for another two, three months. So very, very important that you actually understand that. So someone cleaning and disinfecting. So that's another document that I have. And this is going through soap hand wash, um, hand sanitizers, you know, um, where they will be, what stations will you have, the different types of surface wipes that you'll have, disinfectant sprays, your um, tablet and your FPOS, you know, you can put a, a sheet of plastic over it and that's what I've seen a lot of places do, but that's going, that's going to get contaminated if someone had the virus and they touched it and you didn't replace that, that's going to be contaminated. So, you know, um, what we kind of really need to do here is have a lot of electronic transactions in our business so we're not handling money. So you want to try and eliminate that as much as you possibly can and just have you know, um, electronic transmissions. But the, the device that you use, if you need to cover it when they're touching it, but then you need to remove that, wipe it down and cover it again. Now, the other thing that you've got to think about is um, you know, with tablet screen and phone wipes, you know, when anyone answers the phone in your business, you know, I know we're working with people, but if they answer the phone, then it needs to be cleaned after they, they um, use the phone. So you need to have a policy in place so that when someone answers the phone, what is going to be your policy once they've finished that phone call? They, they must clean it and clean the whole thing properly. First of all, their hands need to be washed before they do that, and then they need to clean down that phone. Um, they need to clean, to clean down the keyboards after they they um, use it. So we can't spray it because it'll, that'll ruin the keyboard, but you need to wipe over with, with uh, or maybe have plastic over it so that you can wipe over the plastic. So all of those things that you really do need to make sure that you have everything in place. And it's a lot of things to go through. So you really need to have had it already happening or at least make sure that you start planning for that. Your cleaning stations are really important. So whatever those cleaning stations are, and I would suggest that if you've got 
uh, back sink that you make back to your cleaning station. Obviously, you're going to have, if you have sinks in the room, they have to be cleaned down, but you'll have a station where you might take bowls or whatever to that will be cleansed and sterilized in that area. You obviously need to wipe down your own stations in your rooms, but you would have one station would, would be the cleaning station. Wherever possible, when you're drying your hands, try and use paper towels, don't use hand towels um, or tea towels or anything like that to dry your hands because what different surfaces will hold the bacteria for a certain amount of time and they're all very, very different. So, you know, glass can hold the virus for probably, you know, five to nine days, depending on the type of glass. Plastic, it's about three days. So every surface is different. So every surface has to be taken into consideration on how you will clean that to make sure that it has been appropriately cleaned. Now, the thing comes to like, you know, we're, we're in winter and we, in our environment, we are cozy. We get people into to beds and we put dunas over the top of them. You know, we really need to think how we're gonna do that. So um, I've asked a lot of questions and I've been told that Glen 20 is um, a spray that we can use to spray down the doona if you want to use a doona. What I would suggest is that you have two or three so that if you do spray it, it can be put somewhere to air dry that um, you know, it's not going to stay damp in, in the area where it is, it puts, it's put out somewhere where you can air dry it, not in a clothes dryer. Clothes dryers and things like that, you cannot use because the virus can be airborne by the air blowing out of those. So when the clothes dryer is going around, it blows cool out, air out the back, and that can actually spread a viral infection if there's virus in, in the um, things that you're drying. So you need to be very, very aware of that. So washing things, um, you have to air dry them. You can't dry them in a dryer. So, um, and the other thing is if you're using like a spray or something like that, you've got to make sure that you completely spray. It's not just a quick whiz over. You have to spray the whole area that um, has touched that person. And I think that's something we, we kind of, that's why it's going to be a little bit damp. Mm -hmm. So cleaning guidelines. Um, again, you you should have something for... Um, that and that will be a document like this that will have the surface that you're cleaning so just for instance if you're frequently touched surfaces you know, how do you clean that what sort of cleansing um, product will you use to clean that that's really important and how often so you need to have this a document like this that's laminated for your staff or your team members to make sure that they go over and that will cover the different types of surfaces that need to be cleaned and how frequently they need to be cleaned. So, um, and who does that cleaning? And I know that some clinics, you know, have big teams, you know, need to think about that as well, you know, your hours that you'll operate, but will you have someone that's, that's going to come in and just do that after everybody? That's something that you need to think about. Um, who does that? How's it going to be done? What apparatuses you're going to use? What cleaning substances you're going to use for that? Now, if you have a look at these images, and I particularly put these images up here because every single one of these images, they're using a cloth fabric to clean. So they're spraying and then they're wiping it over with a cloth. We can't do that. You would spray and you need to use something that's going to be thrown out. Okay, so, so you can't, don't think you can use cloth um, substances or fabrics to be able to be part of your cleaning routine. And when you clean, you have to have gloves on. Very important. So bedding. Now, this is something that we need to think about. How are we going to get around this? So yes, you can use things and spray it down with Glen 20. Um, there's been people that have put suggestions up saying that they're getting cloth sheets and they're cutting them and they're washing them. As long as they're air dried, that's fine. Um, you can buy, and I've actually just bought some disposable sheets that are not, you know, they're about 90 cents each that are quite substantial. You know, we'll talk about the cost of all this in a second, but you need to make sure that the bedding is, look, we can't just turn a towel over. You can't do that. So if someone is lying on a towel, the next person that comes in will have a brand new fresh towel. 
and the towel that you take off the bed has to be laundered and air dried. So you can't reuse. If you reuse something, if you get complacent with this, the moment we let down our guard and we could become complacent is the moment that we'll hear on the news, everyone's shutting down again and we'll have another outbreak. So we all have to abide by this to make sure. And I, I for one, do not want our industry to be the first industry that has a outbreak of this virus. You know, if we can stay clean in the beauty industry, that's gonna teach the rest of the world how amazing we are. So um, look at the bedding that you're using. And I would suggest if you are using a doona that you put maybe something between the client and the doona. So maybe a uh, disposable sheet. I don't think the rolls are wide enough. So I think you have to, have to use something that's a little bit larger like the disposable sheets. So just so you know, I don't know if this is appropriate, Frank, just to say where I got mine from because I did a little bit of research. So I actually bought my disposable sheets from the Australian Physiotherapy Equipment. Um, they're in WA. So you can actually Google, I didn't write down the number. It's a 1300 number. So just be careful of where you buy these things. Like, you know, Livingston's and places like that are really expensive. So you need to shop around and get your price. So I bought a pack of 100 for $89.26, I think it was. And that was the flat sheets. And then they had fitted sheets as well. That, um, and I bought the fitted sheets because I was thinking that maybe I can put my Juno inside a fitted sheet. So I, and so only the outside of it will be exposed, but the part, so it's gonna be harder for them to take that off. So just something that I thought about that we would do anyway. And the fitted sheets are about $102 for a hundred. So not cheap, but it's something that we need to think about. Okay, chairs. Now, if you've got um, chairs that are fabric chairs where people sit on, every time someone gets off that chair, you have to spray it down with a disinfectant. So um, if you can, maybe take those out and just put in plastic fold-up chairs for now. I know it's not, it's taking away the aesthetics of our businesses, but you know, like, hey, everyone's kind of expecting that at this time. So, you know, I have beautiful velvet chairs in my business, so I've just tied ribbon around it, a gold ribbon around it, so they, they don't sit on it, and I've just got fold-up plastic chairs where we're going to do our consultations. I cringe every time I look at it, but, you know, it's what we have to do. So just be aware of that and your equipment, you know, like um, if you're using certain types of equipment, make sure they are really clean because viruses will live for days um, and depending on the surface or what that equipment is to how long it's going to live for. So it's not a matter of minutes, it's days, hours, days. So we really, and sometimes, you know, a couple of weeks. So we need to be careful of how we're cleaning our equipment. Really make sure that you're up the ante with your sterilising um, of that equipment. Make sure that your team members are right across the board, whether you're a sole operator or you've got two or you've got 10, 10 team members. Make sure that they all are on your bus when it comes to this and they all understand it. Do little practice sessions before you open on how you're going to clean. So everyone knows what they have to do. Social distancing, a bit hard with us. You know, I, when I saw this, um, this little image, I thought I have to use that. Like, how do, we, how do we do social distancing, you know, with what we do? But, you know, a bit re unreal, really, because we're going to have them at the front counter. Then we're going to take them and put them up on the bed and touch them. So it's kind of, you know, but we have to abide by those guidelines. So at your front uh, reception area, you need to have that tape, the crosses or whatever they're doing on the floor that's appropriately measured from the counter. Try to um, prevent them from leaning on the counter. Try to get them to prevent them from putting their bags and things like that on the counter. The same with refreshments and things like that. Um, you know, like unless you've got a dishwasher in your premises, you should refrain from using glass. So I know it's not nice, but plastic throwaway is probably what we have to, to think about for, uh, you know, for a few months until, until 
there is a um, control mechanism where they've got, um, what is it, Frank, where they stop the virus from spreading? Oh, uh, the vaccine. Yeah. yeah, vaccine. Thank you. Big mindset. Until they actually have that, we have to we have to make sure we do all this kind of stuff. So social distancing also will apply to people walking into your businesses. You know, you can't have walk-ins. You know, you don't, those people haven't been screened so that you cannot have walk-ins. So you need to have, I've seen, you know, at the medical places and things like that, they have a little table just outside with hand sanitizers on it and a sign up saying, please do not enter. Please do not enter this, this building. And also you need to have another sign that says, if you have a cold or if you have a sore throat or if you've been sneezing and coughing, please do not enter our premises. And it's not being rude. It's actually protecting them and protecting your team members and protecting your business. So make sure you have those stations. And they can't be inside. They need to be outside. So that social distancing will apply to people that arrive to your business early for appointments. So if someone comes in early, they can't wait for you. They need to go and wait out in the car or you know, have a chair outside. I'm sure you don't want them sitting on the, on the footpath. I'm sure they don't want to either. But maybe you could have them just wait in the car and you can just call them. But try to make sure that you you set your appointments that you don't have any overlapping. So, you know, this is going to be a time where we need to, if we've got an hour treatment, you need to allow an hour and a half for that treatment. So that, or, or even longer in some cases. So that's going to give you time to do your treatment, get the person out, clean up and ready for the next person to come in. So that time frame you need to allow for that. Again, it's going to be a cost to you, so we'll cover that in a sec. But we really do need to understand that people cannot just stream through the clinics. And um, if they're late or if they're early, they need to let you know from outside. Okay. So scheduling consults and treatments. I think, you know, I think we've been very good at doing online consultations in the last seven weeks or so. And I think that's something that we should maybe continue to do. So if someone rings to make an appointment, try and do the consultation online before they come in. That is going to save you, one, having extra people in the clinic, and two, um, it'll allow more time for you to put more people in the clinic. So if you don't just sit down for a, a half-hour consultation before you take that person through for a treatment, it'll give you a re relieved time for you. So make sure, I think, to try and have a policy where you're doing these online consultations. Obviously, you'll look at their skin when they come in, but you can cover off the major things, and that would be medical history, that would be treatment options that they've had, products that they're using, you know, what they're wanting from their skin, and photographs. So these Zoom consultations, I'm sure you're very good at them now, but continue to do those Zoom consultations. Make sure that you have team meetings before you open. Don't just say, oh, God, good, we're opening Monday morning. Everyone arrive at 9 o'clock and then go, oh, my gosh, what are we doing? You know, make sure that you actually have a team meeting either sometime this week or open at 12 o'clock on Monday and have that four hours that you actually get everybody very used to the procedures that you're going to have in place. Everybody needs to know what's expected of them, what they can do, um, to make sure that everything stays clean and COVID-19 free within your business. Have a scheduling policy, you know, um, the days, hours, length of time that you'll schedule treatments and consults. So that's what I was talking about before. You know, if you've got a 15 minute treatment, you know, or a half hour treatment, now becomes a 15 to half hour treatment and a half hour treatment is an hour treatment. So it's not that the client's in there with you all that time. You do what you need to do, get them out, you clean. So you need to make sure that you do that, allow that time. If you do back to back, um, you'll be breaking all policies and procedures that are going to be set by us by the, the department. And if you have a look at their if you have a look at their policy, it's in there that we need to allow time for that. So Appointment scheduling, we've talked about that. Um, cleaning and sanitation practices need to be applied after every single person. You can't do two, three people and then go, okay, I've got to clean my room now. 
and spray down my doona. It needs to be done after every single person. So when clients contact the clinic to schedule an appointment, you need to provide specific instructions in advance. So what are they going to expect? How should they arrive? So if they are early for an appointment, ask them, have a bell or something. I know it's old, old school, but have something out the front that they can ring, that they don't cross the door until you say you can come in. Okay, so have something there that's going to stop them, a barrier that's going to stop them from just coming into the clinic. Uh, we know that clients love to own our clinics. You know, they love us, they love to own our clinics. And this is going to be very hard to say, hang on, we love you, but you just can't come in until I say so. Um, so, you know, when clients come in, that's why I said get them to wait in the car if they are early and the consultations online. I hope I'm not going too fast. We can have some question time at the end of this, Frank, if, if yeah, okay. So, sensor bars can spread by anything we touch, and that's the, that's the thing. I, I mean, there have been people that have died from this virus, but, the, but there's also um, hundreds and thousands more people that have got the virus that have lived. So, it's not, it's not going to kill us unless we're unhealthy before we actually before we actually got it. But the thing with this virus is so contagious. And that's why it's, that's why it's a pandemic because it's, you know, you can just touch a, a desk that someone might've touched two seconds before you um, and it can just um, spread that fast. So this considered um, offering curbside pickups. I think we've been doing that for a little bit now, you know, with um, selling products and things online, but you could also do that still. You know, don't discount that. Don't think, okay, we're going to get back to normal now. You have to come in and get your product. You know, still offer that service and it's going to make your clients feel comfortable as well. So it's all about making them and reassuring them that we are doing everything we possibly can to prevent anything from spreading and making sure they stay healthy. Um, your counters and, and rooms, drawers, cabinets, like this is a thing with drawers. If you are doing a treatment, you know how sometimes we open a drawer to get something out of it you know, as to utilise in our treatment, it might be you get fry out of it, it, might be you get some tweezers out of a drawer or whatever. Please ensure that you get all of those things out of the drawer while your hands are still fairly clean before you touch the client. Because if you open the drawer, put your hand in the drawer, then, then you have to clean everything inside that drawer. You need to take everything out, clean the drawer, clean everything that's inside that. Hand mirrors, you know, just things that we probably don't think about, but, you know, when someone goes to, you show them their face, you give them a little hand mirror, you know, all of those things need to be cleaned after every single person and they, and your patients need to know that you're doing that. So make sure you take it off them um, and put it in the sink or whatever so they can see that it's going to be cleaned. We've talked about um, switch out cloth robes for disposable paper robes. Yeah, um, that's going to be a very expensive exercise. So whatever you're using for your clients, like, you know, even if you just use towels for now, or even if you just have, have cotton sarongs or something like that, that will dry really easy, or even you can buy disposable towels. Again, it's adding another cost. But, you know, just getting something that you can actually wash. I wouldn't be using robes. I wouldn't be using heavy toweling um, products that are going to be hard. Remember, it's winter. Things don't dry too easy in winter. So you need to be using things like that. Uh, shared magazines, new newspapers, newsletters. The beautiful flyers that, that companies give us to present to people. You know, a way, a way that we can get around this, because we still want them to have those flyers, is maybe have them in a plastic sleeve. And when you get the flyer out, you have gloves on, or you can see that, you sterilize your hand with hand sanitizer before you get that paper um, folder out to give to them. But they can't be lying around for people just to pick up and read. Okay, so staff. So make sure you have policies in place. Um, this is to ensure their health. Now, you know, sometimes we might get a little bit of resistance from our beautiful team members when we're trying to put all these policies and procedures, but just remind them it's for their health as well as it's for the patient's health. So we want to make sure that our team members feel safe at work. And I've heard from a lot of um, 
um, staff members that they're a bit nervous themselves about being at work. You know, we've had the fear, fear of God put into us over this. So we need to make sure that they feel safe and they feel comfortable about being back in the workplace. So make sure they have the policies that they know and get them to sign it once they've read it. So review weekly work schedules and workflow to practice social distancing. And it might mean like if you've got people that are on um, JobKeeper and things like that. So if, if you've got like maybe six team members and they're all on JobKeeper, it might mean that they stay on JobKeeper until we can and you stagger their working hours so that you don't have the whole six back in the clinic. So you're staggering working hours, you're staggering um, client contact time in the clinic as well. Um, we've talked about the policies for patients that might be infected. Really important that you do that. Um, consider reducing the, whoopsie, consider reducing the number of employees at front desk. So that's another thing we don't want, you know, I know for me in my clinic as well, you know, if we've got someone that's at the clinic, there might be someone that will come and say hi to them or, you know, say goodbye to them or something like that because, you know, that's kind of what we do. But now I think we really need to be mindful that there can only be one staff member out there at one time. So you can't have a lot of people out in the, um, in the area. Um, I think we've done a lot of this. Set firm dress code. Now, there's things, there was a, a thing on the other night that I watched and it was on infection control. And they were talking about beauty clinics and they were saying that we need to go to work in non-uniform, change at work into our uniform and leave in our normal clothes. So, um, and the theory behind that was that while you're at work, you could be touching some person's body um, with the clothing that you're wearing. So again, there are options that you could think about if you want to go, you know, full on is to ask your staff to come to work with in normal clothing, change at work so that they haven't touched anyone with their clothing on the way to work and then have a plastic bag to take the clothing home to launder it that night um, and change before they leave. So you know, it's a good practice to have and uh, I know I'm going to be adopting that one. Gloves and things like that, we need to make sure that we change them regularly. Again, we've got to think of the costs of all of this. You know, um, facial shields, I've seen some clinics have gone to a lot of um, expense and they've bought these big plastic warrior shields that they're wearing. Um, I don't think you need to go to that, those measures but we do need to wear face masks. Now, just one thing about the face masks. Um, the face masks are not going to stop you from getting breathing in the virus. You can still breathe that in yourself. What the face mask will do is stop you breathing onto somebody else. So the face mask really is protecting everybody else. It's not protecting you. But people will want us to wear those. Okay. Uh, temperature, um, you know, like I understand taking temperature is going to be important, but for me, like someone could be hot, just, you know, you know, think of a woman going through menopause, their body can heat up at a time. You take their temperature and the temperature is going to be high. It doesn't mean they've got the COVID virus. So, I mean, again, you can take temperatures. Maybe if you take someone's temperature and it's on the high side above 38, take it about 10 minutes later again. Um, with your staff members as well, you can do temperature control with them when they walk in the door. So review specific talking points to maintain consistent messaging when patients ask questions. So again, just making sure that you're not over the top of them without your mask on, off and things like that. Just common sense stuff really. Okay. So the reception area is probably going to look like this for a long time. You know, um, we, we'd like to see it full of people, but this is probably a reality for some time. So we've got to make sure that it is clean, that we don't have it um, people all around and we only have one member out there. Your retail area as well. Now, if, people, if you've got a retail area where people can come in and pick things up and shop, 
you know, it's an open space area where they can um, browse, then every day you've got it, or every time someone touches something, you've got to wipe it down and put it back. So you need to be very careful. So I would have a no touch policy so that you actually are the person that's touching it. Make sure your hands are clean before you pick anything up to present to somebody. So um, if you have testers, I would take the testers away because you can't have anyone putting their fingers in the testers. Maybe let's get back to beautiful shopping at Tiffany's and have a beautiful tray that we can put a few items on and present to people where they, you, know, you can show them the tester and you can take the product out and let them test it, and put it onto their skin, let them test it, but they can't touch your testers. So beautiful makeup stands and things like that. You're just going to have to put them away or just put a no touch policy sign on it. So you need to have a checklist for each room. And this is a checklist that will be something like this, that when you know someone comes out of a room, you tick, tick, tick. Benches have been cleaned, beds have been cleaned, taps have been wiped down, drawer handles have been wiped down. Tick off all the points that you have to clean in that room. The same for the retail area, um, your kitchen area. If you're out there and you make yourself lunch, then there's going to be a tick list. What did you do to clean that down? So tick off all the things. I've wiped down with disinfectant. I've done this. So all of those things have to be ticked off. Restrooms. If you've got a restroom in your clinic and someone goes to that, it needs to be cleaned every single time. And the common areas as well. Now, I, I did a talk a few weeks ago and um, it was mind-blowing when I actually found out one of the main reasons people move from a clinic or a salon is because they felt that there was poor hygiene, hygiene. This is before COVID. There's poor hygiene standards in that clinic. So the highest percentage left clinics because of hygiene standards. So if someone now walks into your business and there's a fluff of dust on the floor because they're going to be looking, they're going to be looking in every little corner that they possibly can and they see that fluff of dust, then you're probably letting them down. You're letting yourself down as well. So every single day, have a policy on when we come in, you know, we need to clean. You need to clean throughout the day, sweep throughout the day. And you need to also clean the last thing you do at, in the afternoon when you leave is clean. So you clean the afternoon, you have to clean again in the morning. So you need to make sure you do that. And you have checklists for that. So everything in your space... That um, and maybe allocate spaces for each person, and they need to like you go to public toilets at airports and things like that, and there'll be a checklist on the door where someone's been in, and they've ticked all the boxes that they've cleaned, and they've signed and they've put the time down that they actually did it. We need you to be doing the same. Okay. I'm just going to move on to business opportunities. Frank, is there any questions? Uh, thanks for all that, Gail. It's been really informative. The only thing is, I was at a um, a doctor's surgery yesterday and I noticed there was people actually within the waiting room and, you know, we've been told we can have 20 people in the salon and I'm not sure, like, people might get a little bit funny um, if they're going to the local doctors and they're seating in their waiting area. So I think social distancing, I think we... It's going to be the number of rooms that you have will determine how many people that you can actually have in. And I okay. Think, yeah, so I think, yeah. Um, yeah. And the other thing is I, 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 I caught the sarong, but, I, you know, I was looking online to, you know, what to put on um, the staff, like as in touching the client. So the gloves and all that sort of thing, you know, we've had in place for a while. But... What, what did you recommend that they could, like, I mean, other than the uniform, because if you're, um, you know, waxing a leg and look, I, I tend to get a little bit grubby sometimes, but what if um, I, I touch the client's clothing? So you, you can buy disposable aprons. Yeah, yeah. So um, you can actually, well, yeah, you, you can actually use, utilise those disposable aprons, put those on. And yep. um, you can actually, um, as long as you don't touch anyone, you could probably wear those for a while during the day. 
But okay. if you do come in contact, you would have to remove that and throw it out. Yeah, yeah. I thought possibly for the waxing and yeah. facials especially um, because, you know, like you're fairly close. And I looked yeah. at the, I actually did look at the um, sheets because I thought if I, ha I we have um, a towel company, so that was not a problem where they lay, but normally we only change the top two. So I'll have to change all of those. But yeah. what about if um, we put a doona on, put a sheet on, a disposable sheet on top of them and the doona over that? As long Would as I still doona have to... As long as the doona didn't come in contact with yeah. the person, that's fine. But you know with your towel companies now, you're yes. not allowed to have... They have to pick up every day. You're not oh. allowed to leave them in the clinics for a week now. So I think oh. Al um, Alsco, they pick up once a week. They have yeah, to they do. <laughs> yeah, they have to pick up daily. Oh, so you need to wow. talk to them about that because I think oh, um, yeah, I think I didn't even think about towels that. in the clinic yeah. is a space that can actually generate um, contamination. Oh, God. So you need to actually, yeah, talk to them what, about that. Like our what, costs, we're going to talk about costs in a second, but our costs mm -hmm. now for running a clinic are escalating um, mm -hmm. and you need to, we'll, we'll, we'll wait for a second, we'll talk about that, but you need yeah. to add all of these costs into into your treatments. Yeah, so the towels might become... Um, you, need to have, you need to have a cost that is a COVID-19 expense. So like we've got GST, you have a COVID-19 expense that you add on to that. And whatever oh, okay. it might be, and it might be between $10 and $20, whatever you're going to, all the throwaway, all the extra expenses, you can't absorb that in what you're charging already. You just can't. You know, you, you won't make money. So no. you survive. So you need to have that, that expense. And I think yeah. people are going to be quite happy to pay that. If they I know, didn't even think of it. <laughs> extra charge, yep. No, yeah. I think I didn't even think of that, to be honest. So that was a great move, extra charge. Yeah, I think that's important that we all do that. Yeah. I think yeah. we're going to have to. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I, su I suppose if, like, if it's a gown, a sheet, there's a couple of dollars there, I probably wouldn't want to make money on them. I'd probably just want to look at, Okay, well, there's a pack. And and what did you think, like, with tweezers and things? Well, you're going to have to use an autoclave. Okay, okay. So um, to make sure that they're clean, that they're sterilised. So wash them, always wash them with soap and yeah. water. Yeah, and yeah. And they need to be autoclaved. But the, um, the extra money, like, you, you might think it's just 80 cents here and, you know, that's nothing and we can absorb that. But if you add up that 89 cents for the sheet and then, you know, changing your yeah. glass twice and then, you know, all the disinfecting mm. stuff that we have to have, you know, by the end of it, that's probably another $10 that you have added on to that treatment. Yeah. So, you know, if someone said to me, we have a $10 COVID-19 expense here that we put onto the treatment, mm. I, you know, it's just to make sure that everything we are using is um, of standard and disposable, I would go, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think, well, that's true too, but, you know, I think um, from our clients and the ones I've spoken to, um, they're probably over it because not enough people have gotten sick. They think it's just ridiculous and you can see by them shopping that, um, you know, they just sort of think, well, people are just not taking as much precaution outside of the shop. You know. I tend to I tend to agree with that, but I yeah. think what we have to what we have to be very mindful of here is that yeah. why it was so bad in Europe is because it hit in the middle of winter. Exactly, we are coming, we are coming into winter. Yeah, so, exactly, and, that's and people problem. are starting to travel again. And of course, you know um, that that's exactly right. And our, our profession is a lot closer than you know. Like if I go to the doctors, really they're not even as close as we're going to be. So I think we do probably need to take more precaution than most. Yeah, I don't think we can become complacent, not yet anyway. It's no. too soon. You know, we want, yeah. we want to be able to stay working. And the last thing we want to happen yeah. is, you know, in another four weeks go, okay, we're shutting down again. 
So I think yeah. we need to be very, you know, even like if you do this, you know, for eight weeks or so, but I think you need to be very, very, very serious about how we operate our businesses right now. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Mm. So I just want to talk to you about business opportunities now. And, you know, for me, this could be a very new beginning. Yeah, and I think this is um, this is a time, like, I, I hope that, you know, in the shutdown period that you've all had time to reflect on your businesses. You know, like, I hope it, you really did take that time out because it's a time to, to go back and have a brand new business. And this is a good thing about this. Like, we've had, we've been locked down. Uh, we haven't been able to operate. We haven't been able to operate for seven to eight weeks. So now is the time to rethink about your business. How do you want it to be? Where do you want your business to go? And I want to increase my prices now. Like, don't go back and start start um, doing specials after special after special. Please don't do that because people will want to come back to you. People will, will come back to you. They will. So if you, if you go back and do specials to get people back in the door, then that's just going to downgrade your business and we have got these other expenses that we have to cover so and you've got to make up for the eight weeks that you've had off you know you've got to make up for that time so please like think about your price list get rid of your old price list and and just think about increasing your prices by you know five to ten dollars people won't notice or they won't even think about it they haven't been to you for a while so just think about that that's really important think about where what do you what would be your perfect business that's what you need to think about what is my perfect business what do i want do i want to get up to go to work every day for 200 300 a week that's not perfect business so think about your business model you know if you could start a business brand new from scratch again what would you do and how would you do it differently and now is the time that you you've been given this door this window this opportunity to do that so I really encourage you to think about that. Start doing things a little bit differently too, like include a blog, um, blog posts on your websites. You know, they're easy to do. I can do it. So if I can do it, anyone can do it. I can tell you, seriously, they're not hard. So you know, just put a blog post up once a week that you actually take over to your, um, take over to your Facebook and your Instagram pages. You know, um, snippets. I didn't even know what that word was until nine weeks ago, but just taking part of your blog and putting it onto Facebook and Instagram. And it really is um, doing business a whole lot different. And it's educating and giving people information about what you do. You know, do little video things that you can put on Facebook about, you know, um, not hygiene standards. If, if you're talking about what people are getting over, they're probably getting over seeing all that stuff. Like put little videos about how amazing you can actually make someone's skin look and change someone's life. Things like that that you need to think about that's going to, people want to come and see you. They're not going to come to see you because you're cheaper than down the road. They're going to come to see you because you've given them a purpose. And I think that's what we really need to think about. How, what purpose are we giving people? What, what message are we giving people? And um, discounting is not the way to go. Now is time to elevate. So... Um, so doing, um, send a welcome email blast out. So you, you've got time to do that. So you're opening on Monday. So think about an email blast that you can send to all your customers, to every single one of them. And hopefully you've stayed in contact with them now. But now's the time to be really rejoicing that you can open the doors and talk about the healthiness you know, of the skin, the opportunities to actually um, develop and grow and you know, grow more clients and things like that. I think this is a time that you can actually do that. So for me, I've sat back and I've reflected on what I've done in the past in business and I'm coming back with a whole new image of, you know, like I've always been the sort of person that, um, you know, like if I can help you, I'll give it to you for nothing. And, you know, you've got, you've got pimples and you can't fix it because you haven't got enough money, let me do it for nothing. You know, I'm not doing that anymore. It's not because I want to be mean. It's because I need to make people value me. And that's what you have to do is make people value you. And if you go back and you start doing things at a lower cost or at discounts, they won't value you. But they'll value someone down the road that's charging them $100 more. And that's a fact. So you need to think about where do you want to be? 
What would be your perfect business when you open your doors? What do you want it to look like? So, um, like, review your price list and include the... I wouldn't include the COVID-19 fee. I wouldn't include that. I would say it's extra. So that when we get through this and you don't have to do all this um, sanitising and all that stuff again, you can say, well, we don't have it now. So I wouldn't, wouldn't add it into the cost because you need to increase your prices and the COVID-19 fee is on top of that. Okay, so if you add the COVID-19, it's going to give you a much bigger jump. So if you're doing a facial that's $120, make it $135 if that's your basic facial, plus $7, $10 or whatever it is, that's your COVID fee. Okay. Think about some treatments that you've never promoted in the clinic or change the names of something, you know, that you have in, the, in your treatment. You know, change something that you're doing. Make it different. Make, have a new image when people come in so they're not walking into a clinic that they saw eight weeks ago. They're coming into a new clinic. So change your colour scheme. Change, change your products around. Change your chairs around. Change something that makes it look different. And that's going to, to you know, people go, well, they're really trying to make things different here. And that's, you know, not that I think you have to justify price increases, but if someone says, does notice, and I don't think they will, but if they do notice, you can say, look, we've done a lot of work to revamp the clinic and make it different or whatever you want to say to them. But you need to create a new you. You need to create a new business. You should already have been doing that. So it's not too late. You've still got a few days to do that. So you can get out there and work really hard to make that happen. So it might be how you welcome people. It might be how you um, what your marketing is. And those little little um, blog posts are really easy and really effective. So just when you raise your prices, the clients you attract to those who you really want to come in the doors. When you lower your prices, you're going to attract a clientele that doesn't really care about you. And that's the truth. So they'll go somewhere else when they see something cheaper. So when you increase your prices and you charge what you're worth, and you know, when you think about this, I want you to think about, you know, whether you're working by yourself, you've got a team. I want you to think about how much do you get out of that facial treatment that you charge, just say $120. By the time you pay everything else, how much do you get out of that? And if, it, if you're not getting anything or if you're just getting $10, why are you in business? Why are you there? So you really want to go on that amazing holiday and be able to afford it. You want money, you want surplus in the bank. And I know people have struggled in the last few weeks because they didn't have that surplus in the bank. Don't let that happen again. This should be a warning. Okay, now's the time for us to really make sure that we are um, financial. We have financial freedom. So if we do get locked down, yeah, we've got $5,000 in the bank. So that's what we really want to work towards. Okay, so yeah, I love this when I saw this too. So often we look so long in a closed door that we do not see the one that has been open for us. And that's how I feel about this COVID virus. We had our doors shut, you know, so now, you know, we can see a new picture, a new us in the future. So I think opportunities, think of new business opportunities. It's a new business that you're going back into. So basically, Frank, that's... Um, Thank you. That's, yeah, that's uh, the end. So I hope that kind of helped. I, 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 I really, Thank you for putting me out of my comfort zone, Frank. <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> one, one more thing on, on um, if I could just... I just had this here for me to remind me, and I forgot to talk about this. Oh, you yeah. know, think about bundling treatments together. Don't do single treatments. Like you, are, you will have... You'll be you won't be able to have as many clients in the clinic as what you normally would have. So if you have four clinics compared to eight clinics, you want to get the best you can out of that. So bundle treatments together for your clients. So you do things where you're doing a facial treatment and you might do something on, you know, on their body or you might do something on the hands. So bundle things together. Have, you know, like, um, have treatments where you've got bundles of two, bundles of three, bundles of four. It's a great idea. So, yeah, I think that's great yeah, to do that. Absolutely. 
Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Gay. Uh, uh, I think that uh, everybody uh, will agree with me that we have got a lot of things to do. And thanks to you, we, we've, we can sort of start uh, working towards a plan. Um, and that's really important. It's uh, very, very important that we do. I'll so send this presentation to you, Frank, so you've got uh, it. Fantastic. That would be great, and I can share it with everybody. Uh, so yeah, that would be wonderful. And I really like that that uh, last section that you talked about uh, your purpose, the purpose of, of making ah. clients feel uh, empowered, uh, confident, uh, youthful. I mean, that's that's what that's what you're really selling. You're not selling a facial. You're selling, you know, uh, that that uh, feeling of healthy skin and absolutely uh, changing their lives. That's right. So it's. You're, you're giving a lot and um, you shouldn't underprice yourself. And as you say, you know, uh, when you, you cut down all the, the cost of the rent, of the, the staff, the products, everything, uh, even at the end, you're, you're left with $10. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, you, you, I think we, we need to sit down and think, why are we doing what we do, Frank? You know, why do you do what you do? I know everyone's going to say because they're passionate and they love it. And yes, that's a good why. But yeah, there's got to be another reason why you do it. So we can't live off the, you know, exactly. off air. That's so right. In, in this uh, business, it has to generate an income. Uh, otherwise, uh, then you, you, yeah. you, you can't survive. Um, and this, this uh, pandemic certainly uh, brought forward, you know, the, the risks that are involved if, if the business has to shut down. And what, what, what do you have? What sort of backup plan do you have? Uh, and that's why we, you know, we, gave, uh, we, we talked a lot about the online consultation, uh, the communication uh, through uh, videos or text messaging, just keeping that uh, contact with all the clients so that uh, you, they, they feel that you're still there, you're still present, and you can still bring them something of value. Um, uh, so that's really important. And I think that... that um, uh, my my suggestion is that uh, get get all the plans and the safety measures put in place, and then communicate to your clients that you're you're thrilled to be open, that you're thrilled to see them again, uh, and that you know uh, uh, that you will see them, but by appointment only, so not to not to drop by, perhaps uh, uh, just unexpectedly, and um, and set up a. a a real uh, reunion uh, that uh, where they'll feel safe. Uh, once yeah. they come, once they they will they will see everything that you're doing. No problem. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So I think that's the same. I had a phone call the other day, and it was just um, a, a client, or she wasn't a client really, just inquiring. You know, do you guys wear masks? What are your hygiene standards? Yeah. And that was just someone. So people are going to be scared. So just with this document here, Frank, this is actually a document that was put out by the Queensland government specifically for um, beauty therapists and nail salons. So it's a checklist. Yes. And I'm sure each state will have one of these. So it was just covid19.queensland.gov.au. Yes. So I'm sure um, if you did New South Wales, Victoria, they would have one as well. Then and this is very specific. So it's just a checklist that you can actually go through right. everything to um, make sure that you are COVID compliant. Will you be able to um, uh, send me a copy of that document? I yes, I will. I will. But they are they are copywriters, so just be... Okay, okay. <laughs> no problem. Uh, Danielle, are you there? Are you with us? Because uh, I think you, you sent me something like that. But we'll, we'll, look, we'll uh, go online and uh, look at all those documents. Uh, also, I think you mentioned the Australian Physiotherapy. Uh, yes. I looked them up and I think that their website is apemedical.com.au. But we'll, we'll also uh, put those details down um, on our recording version. And we'll have all the, the details so that the people can look for those they, they sound reasonably priced actually i thought those those fitted sheets and um uh the flat sheets i think that they're a must you know uh, otherwise you, you're just never going to be able to deal with the the dunas and all of that yeah i think um and we there has to be a plan everyone has to have a plan yeah. frank um for the, the clients and their team members. Yeah. The Australian Physiotherapy, that was the cheapest that I found. And I looked, 
And I compared them with living. Everyone shops at Livingston, and they've just their prices are ridiculous, really, when you shop around. Okay. Okay. Well, that, that's good to know. I'm just going to ask uh, uh, everyone if there is any, anyone who has um, any questions to ask Gay while we still have her. Um, mm -hmm. You can unmute yourself if you need to. Is there Hello. Anybody? Hello, yeah. Oh, Hello, Deborah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can, can hear you, hear you Deborah. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, I just wanted to say that if you have hand sanitizer out the front of your clinic, and you advise your clients to use that hand sanitizer as soon as they come in, then it's perfectly all right for them to be touching things as long as they're reapplying, surely. Um, it's perfectly okay for them to touch things. Yeah, if they sanitize their hands prior, as they're in the salon, they sanitize their hands, they might pick something up, their hands are clean, the products are clean, they put them back, the next person hand sanitizes, touches the thing. And also using a Milton, which is a, it's a um, antibacterial. Yeah, oh yeah, okay. Used, oh, yeah. In, used in a spray bottle and sprayed on fabrics. Um, Caron have disposable sheets that are very reasonable. Caron. Can be sprayed and wiped down on those. And I think it's 15 minutes by the time it's, it's actually disinfected. Yeah, but just be careful with that because every surface is different. Mm. So that's the, that's the thing. Like, you know, when you look at surfaces, every surface is different and the strength and the different cleanser that you have to use for those surfaces are, are adapted to that. Right. Okay. I just know that Milton is something that you use with babies and yes. uh, I was using it prior to, to I disinfect all my surfaces with it and the beds and everything. It just makes it a hell of a lot easier especially door mm. handles, spraying door handles yeah. and wiping and, and all of that. Um, absolutely, yeah. I think Milton is really good. It, it, but what you have to be careful of is does it kill, what does it actually kill? So some of these antibacterials will um, kill certain bacteria. Yeah. Yes. But does it actually kill viruses? That's what we need to be aware of as well. It's, it's not, I'm not antibacterial, but not antiviral. That's the problem. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I thought it was. But anyway, I'll double check that. It's antibacterial, yeah, but not antiviral. So that's yeah, but the, other thing, the other thing, too, is downloading oh, yeah. the, sign, the COVID-19 sign oh. and placing them around in your salon, getting them laminated at office work, which is super cheap. I was quoted over $100 to get signs laminated for the front door internally in the salon and it was I think over a hundred dollars for that through my printer and when I put it on a USB went to office works and did it there it was like six dollars like thinking about laminated everything yeah. yeah laminated so you need to have these signs up you know you need yeah. to have signs up yeah. everywhere and a sign that you've got for um, the front like these are other signs I'll just show you. So you should have things like this, um, yeah. steps, uh, hand hygiene, um, things like that. You should have all these kind of signs. And yeah. then you need to have one for like uh, a notice. So please do not enter the clinic. Yeah. Something right. like that. Yeah, so just get them all laminated and they need to be everywhere all around the clinic. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, um, Michelle, did you want to ask something? Yes, I did, Frank. Go for um, it. I was I was under the impression that we had to take temperature tests from everyone and have it recorded. Is that correct? Oh. So, and yeah. and actually have everyone's everyone's details recorded at, for the end of the day that we have then everyone's names, temperature, where they've been contact details look you have to record everyone that comes into your business you have to get their name their address their email address and their phone number and the time that and the date that they were in so you have to record that so um, whether you do that on your computer but you need to get them if they don't have that um, facility to join a computer they need to fill that out so it needs to be the name email phone number address the time they were in the clinic and the date that they were in the clinic. That needs to be reported. As far as temperature testing, that's not compulsory.
but the recording oh. is. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Well, um, Gay, uh, thank you so much for being part of this uh, very important meeting. Thanks for um, asking. I, I mean, when we talked about doing this meeting, we discussed what, what, what are you going to talk about? And we're both passionate about the skin and the skin barrier. So I'd love to have you uh, come back and discuss that with us at a okay. future date, if that's all right. Um, uh, that would be wonderful. So we can talk about something that... That's Lovely. Really, that's, my, that's my little... Yeah, my that's little right. Face. The comfort zone. <laughs> so uh, let's do that. Uh, I'll, I'll be in touch with you. Um, okay. Thank you so much for, 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 for doing this. And uh, we really appreciate it. So uh, maybe we can unmute everybody just for a second. Uh, how do we do that? To Lydia here or is <laughs> it? Uh, uh, there it is. It's, it's yeah. unmute everybody. And we can just... Uh, just Thank you, uh, show our appreciation. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Really Thank great. You. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the Thank information. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Thank you. So, so yes. Yeah, so, uh, let's let's all meet up again. Um, uh, yeah. Actually, I'm I'm really sad that we're not going to be able to keep these weekly meetings because it, I've really no. enjoyed them. Uh, but I understand that you all have to uh, keep business rolling again. And like I said, you know, it's, uh, don't think about reopening. Yeah. Think about reinventing yourself mm. as, a, yeah. as, a, as a therapist. Bring something new, bring new treatment. Happiness. Thank you again, Gay. And Thanks, Frank. Say goodbye to everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gay. Send you through some photos, Frank. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.